Our first guest is a world-famous actor and television host, a WWE superstar, and a New York Times best-selling author. Please welcome the very busy John Cena. Hi, John. Ellen, how are you? Thank you very much for having me back. Twitch, good to see you again. Great dance number. And Ellen, very Hanna-Barbera, Fred Flintstone type bowling maneuver. I like your form. Thank you. I, I, I don't really bowl. Uh, I don't know if you could tell that or not, but well, I, I couldn't tell. Couldn't yeah. tell at all. Well, I've seen people bowl, and I think that's what they do. It's a great interpretation of that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you? Are you uh, in some kind of void? Are you okay? What? So this is um, so this is where they keep me. I've been here since uh, <laughs> since March, since about a year ago. Okay. Yeah. And amazingly enough, the suits kept well, up. So. Well. Well, you look good, and uh, you are, as you, you know, as I introduce you, a very, very busy man. And the last time you were here, you said it's really hard for you to take any time off. So, what was it like being forced to stay put over the last year? Well, that's an interesting question. I think a lot of us went through the same journey, and uh, it's it wasn't without its setbacks. I love to work. I love to try to contribute to be a part of something. I love to try to work towards a goal, and a lot of that is career-based. But as soon as this all happened, um, I just took it for what it was. And I knew that there would be no near end in sight. So uh, for the first time in, in you know, 30 years, I was able to just kick back. It felt like I was a, a 10 year old kid again. Like I just enjoyed what I was doing when I was doing it. There's a lot out there to life. And, and, and being dedicated to craft is excellent. And I don't knock anyone who is. But um, there's a lot more dimension to life. And if anything, in this pandemic, I've been encouraged to explore that. Yeah, you learned how to play piano. You, I know you were learning Mandarin before. And yeah. so how are you doing with Mandarin? Oh, uh, I, I suck at both. But I'm learning. <laughs> I'm better than I was yesterday. So I'm still, I'm still learning basic blues on the piano. I know a few pieces uh, and learned that through the pandemic and certainly had time to, to study language. And I really am fascinated with China and Chinese culture, which is what drew me to Mandarin. And I've been able to, to spend a little time towards that, connect with those. Amazingly enough, we've been, we've been so separate. But because of forums like this, um, it's both a gift and a curse. We, I can't be there sitting next to you, which would be really awesome, but we, I can still connect with those that I love. And hopefully, each sunset brings us a little more closer to normal, as it seems like um, uh, uh, Americans are starting to actually uh, move in the right direction. Yeah, well, I hope so, because I look forward to having human beings in this, uh, this building again. That would be, we have yeah. five, six people here right now. Um, I saw a picture of you on a horse. Um, is that something you do a lot? No, that's a rare occurrence. Uh, I think horses are beautiful, but they scare the horse you know what, Ali? And uh, I had to learn to ride a little bit for an upcoming comedy I have coming out this winter, I believe. And uh, that was my one and a half riding sessions. So I wanted to make sure to capture it to remember that I was actually on a horse. Did you have to like, gall was the horse galloping or uh, cantering or? I, a light trot, a okay. light gallop. I, I am, I'm not gonna be an equestrian or, or anything like that in the near future. I'm much more in tune with horsepower than actual horses. Yeah. When you get it down to one horsepower, I'm no good. I understand. <laughs> I feel the same way, but people who love horses love horses. It's a passion. Portia is obsessed with them. Um, and WrestleMania is this weekend. It's going to be the first time that you've missed a WWE. How, how does that feel to you? So, yeah, this is the first time in a long time I won't be able to be at WrestleMania. And it's, it is bittersweet, but at the same time, I don't consider the entire picture of the industry revolves around me. It is not Planet Cena. It is the WWE. And I know WrestleMania will be a spectacular event. And, you know, as, as my time comes to a close, as I'm, I'm turning 44 pretty soon, uh, I will still be active, but certainly not as active as I have been in the past. Uh, I wish I could be there, but those spots are earned, and I think everyone performing has earned a spot. Yeah. Well, that's, oh, you, you've got, like we said, you have so much going on. You have not one, but you have two books coming out, and these are positive um, little paragraphs or quotes. They're just inspirational things that you actually... Uh, we're posting on Twitter, and look, oh, I can do that too. Look, we'll both it, do it. I just, I'm doing this because these are the only two things they give me in the cave. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's so great. I was looking through, and you have one um, for younger, uh, like children, and it's mm -hmm. inspirational. I, I mean, it's really good, and all these things are things that you just came up with which are, uh, don't be uh, um, afraid to establish boundaries. Doing so allows you to give and to remain you. And uh, it's, 
If you find yourself continually disappointed in the behavior of those close to you, it may be time to stand in a place where they can't get close. I mean, you're just, they're all good. Every, you just open any page. Well, thank you very much. It started as, uh, you know, we all go through ups and downs in life, and I think, uh, I, you, although I'm, I'm stuck in a dark void, I, I am human after all, and, and I was going through a pretty down period in my life. It was, it was about four years ago, and I decided just to have a vulnerable moment and put one of those um, thought-provoking journal entries out on Twitter. And four years ago when I started this, a lot of them were about self-love because I was going through that down period realizing that I didn't consider myself enough. And amazingly enough, talk about wonderful timing and just being ready for an opportunity, the very popular group, BTS, had just released an album called Love Yourself. So I put out all these messages about self-love and this, I'm, I'm thinking this is not gonna be a good idea because this big, larger than life, 16 time WWE champion is now talking about vulnerability and the fact that you are enough and you shouldn't be ashamed of who you are but it caught fire because of the BTS army. I was, I was essentially sending a similar message of the band. And this book, these books exist because the army was brave enough, the BTS army was brave enough to support my vulnerable moment. And now it's become a, a part of my daily routine. It's, it's basically my journal. I, I contemplate how I'm feeling. Uh, I basically try to put forth a thought. I never try to, squeeze it to a certain individual. I always try to be as inclusive as I can because I think all of those statements, some of them are aspirational, but they all engage conversation. You're gonna feel a certain way about each one. And I think that's why the book is great for young readers because if you don't know how at home maybe to approach certain subjects, this is someone hopefully that your kids will gravitate towards and maybe can start that conversation. And for adult readers, man, especially with the last year, it just, it gives you a chance to reflect. Like these are, these are things that I've said over the past four years and I go through the pages and I'm moved to emotion. And these words have changed my life. So I've already reached one, I've, I've, I've helped myself. And they've helped me so much live my best life in these last four years that Random House wanted to put together a collection of them to try to do the same. So I really gotta thank K-pop, I gotta thank BTS for, for supporting me in a moment of weakness and turning it into a passion of mine. Yeah. But also thank you to Random House and uh, I, I, it's really a pleasure to be able to have these two books to come out. It's, it's fantastic. We're back with John Cena. That's a clip from your new show, Wipeout. So the silver bullet that is on the show, so people, there it launches people into the air. And yes, this is, my, this is my favorite obstacle because it's one that anyone can do. So basically, uh, n normally obstacles on Wipeout are jumping and trying to avoid swinging things that are gonna knock you into getting messy. The silver bullet is simply a rocket ship that launches you like 40 feet into the air into water. And it goes at such a speed that when you're launched out, you look down and you realize that you've made a, such a terrible mistake. And we filmed at night in January. So not only that, when you hit that water, and because you're on your stomach, most people couldn't get out of the belly flop position, the water is almost freezing cold. So you go for this crazy adrenaline ride, and I would be totally spooked because I have a fear of heights, knowing that I'm falling 40 feet down into an ice bath, it really shocks the system. And it does, I mean, you just kind of hang on. It's, it's the, the least amount of skill, but I think the most underrated obstacle in wipeout. Right, and, and, and the winner gets what for doing that? We're handing out $25,000 every episode. So each episode, one team will eventually get the chance to compete and win $25,000. All right. So you have two huge movies coming out this summer. You have the new Fast and Furious movie. You have the new Suicide Squad movie. People are excited about them. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. Two great movies. Uh, thank you very much. I think people are excited to get to the theaters. I know uh, California's theaters are on the brink of or opening as we speak in capacities of safety. Both of these movies are theater movies. And I think people are really, we're missing a lot of stuff. But just to be able to go see a franchise picture on the big screen in a theater, I think is really important as we take steps to get back to normal. It's the reason uh, Fast 9 was delayed for so long and now is, is gonna come out in June because it deserves that release, not only because of the enormity of the movie, but it's the ninth installment of the franchise and it has fans the world over. And certainly the hype behind the Suicide Squad, 
is is going to deliver. Um, I've, I've seen early pieces of the movie, and man, it's going to be something. It really is something Great. special, and that's coming out in August. Well, we can't wait. I can't wait to have you in the studio. Hopefully, that'll be soon. John, great talking to you. Wipeout airs Thursdays at 9 on TBS. Hi, I'm Andy. Ellen asked me to remind you to subscribe to her channel so you can see more awesome videos, like videos of me getting scared or saying embarrassing things, like ball peen hammer, and also some videos of Ellen and other celebrities if you're into that sort of thing. Ah!